So what happens in azo dyes? These are very stable dyes. Okay, there's a thing called azo dyes. Colored compounds, you make paints out of them. Azo dyes are very stable. Uh, the reason you want dyes to be very stable is because if you have, for example, car paint, uh, you, I mean, there are a lot of elements that are going to uh, react with, with it. Uh, so car paint has to be, I mean, it has to be in the sun, it has to be washed, it has, I mean, lots of chemicals are falling on it. So the dye needs to be very stable and it needs to maintain its color. So azo dyes are such dyes. Uh, the basic structure of an azo dye is, uh, but let's start by the synthesis of azo dye, which is that you start off with nitrobenzene. Okay, let's start with benzene first. You take benzene. So I'm going to draw benzene now. Okay, that's usually the starting material for making an azo group. Uh, that's a benzene molecule. The very first thing is you you are uh, you do nitration, which we have already done. Uh, you need concentrated nitric acid, and you need concentrated sulfuric acid for that. And the temperature for uh, the reaction is between fifty to sixty degree centigrade. degrees centigrade. Uh, that's how your uh, benzene molecule would get nitrated. And an inner two group would get attached to it. So inner two gets attached, usually just one of them. Uh, the next step is you convert it into a phenylamine. The way it's converted into a phenylamine is that you reduce it, reduction happens. And the things that are used for reduction are tin plus concentrated HCl. Tin acts as the reducing agent. Uh, the NO2, uh, what is reduction? Reduction is the loss of oxygen and the gain of hydrogen. and the gain of H atoms. So NO2 gets reduced. So again, drawing the benzene structure, uh, the structure is now reduced. And it turns into an amine. NH2 is formed. And NH2 is your starting material. This phenylamine that is formed, that's your starting material for making an azo dye. And, but usually the reaction starts with benzene. So when you take the phenylamine, So let's draw the phenylamine. That phenylamine gets converted into, into a disonium ion. So there's NH2. And the reaction is done. Na, NO2, and HCl are used. Sometimes this is also referred to as HNO2. Uh, uh, but HNO2 is produced during the reaction, so which is why HCl uh, and NNO2 are added in the raw form, uh, which results in the formation of HNO2. Uh, the temperature that is used for the reaction, the temperature is kept below 10 degrees centigrade, uh, and that results in the production of the disodium ion. So N triple bond N plus one is formed. And there's usually a Cl minus one also. Uh, 
written next to it, but uh, that's an ion, it would dissociate. So uh, N triple bond N plus one, that would be sufficient as well. Uh, you can call this a disonium ion or the disonium salt. which is C6, H5, and N2 is plus one. So that's your disonium ion. It's highly unstable. And decomposes in aqueous solution very rapidly. So it decomposes in aqueous solution very rapidly uh, to produce a phenol if temperature is increased. So if temperature is increased uh, and temperature becomes greater than 10 degrees centigrade. Because this is all that's going on so far. Uh, we're trying to make an azodi. We've done nitration of benzene. We've uh, converted it. We have reduced it. There's a reduction happening. And phenylamine is, is formed. That phenylamine is then further reacted with HCl and NaNO2. And the temperature is kept below 10 degrees centigrade to produce this disonium ion. TK. Is this clear up till now to everyone? Ali, is this clear? Aburera? Sara, is this clear? Ariba, clear? Yes, uh, yes, sir. So the disonium ion is the exodyne. Yes, sir. The uh, disonium ion is not the azodyne. We've just finished the disonium ion at the moment. Uh, that's remember I've, I've said okay, it's highly it's highly unstable, uh, and it decomposes in aqueous solution. So this is definitely not the azodyne. The azodyne is very very stable. Uh, so we're going to come to the azodyne. So you have this disonium ion that's formed. Uh, first, talking about the instability of this disonium ion that it's going to decompose and it's going to produce a phenol. It's going to produce phenol and and simultaneously there's going to be one second. Uh, phenol is going to be produced plus NH4 plus one. It's going to react with water. So this is the decomposition that's taking place. So if the temperature is above 10 degrees centigrade and there's water present. So that's uh, that's not the that's not the azodi. Okay. Now we're going to make we, we're going to uh, 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 we we have the raw materials now. Now we're going to form the azodi. Sorry, you have to remember conditions. Sorry, you have to remember. Or important azodi is open and you get lots of questions. Okay, how the fire is out there. Now our formation of azodi is uh, from disonium ion. We just uh, ended up making a disonium ion from disonium ion. So, uh, this is a disonium ion. That's, remember, it's very unstable. Okay? So, the temperature has to be kept at uh, less than 10 at all costs. So you have you have n triple bond in, and it has a plus one charge. This thing over here is an electrophile. Okay, the disonium ion is the electrophile. Uh, why is it why is it the electrophile? Because it's a positive ion. And since it is a positive ion, as it's a positive ion. Since it's a positive ion, it's going to be attracted to electrons. And who has electrons? Uh, electrons are with benzene. If you, if you look at any benzene, it has this pi electron cloud. So 
So every benzene molecule has lots of electrons. Um, but right at the beginning, TK, if we can go back, like really back one second. Kirith Oscar, electron cloud of benzene. Right at the start, we'll get to the TK, this one. We had discussed that carbon had sp2 hybridization, right? And we had discussed that uh, each carbon atom had this fourth orbital. Each one of them had this fourth orbital, which was not used. Carbon was only making three bonds. The fourth electron eventually started overlapping, ended up forming a pi electron cloud. And I told you that the pi electron cloud had very low charge density. Why? Because the electron cloud was very distributed. There were lots of electrons, but they were distributed over a very wide area, which is why the negative charge density was very, very less. And the same thing would happen over here in this, uh, when we are making a, an azodye. You have a positive ion, you have a disonium ion, this one. As I said, so you have a disonium ion, but it's not going to be attracted to these electrons, but the, because the electrons are very distributed. Uh, the negative charge is not very concentrated. So the positive ion, uh, is not going to be, or it's going to be weakly, very weakly attracted. So it's going to be very weakly attracted to these electrons. So how can we increase the electron density of the benzene pi electron cloud? The way you can do that is uh, that you add an activating group. An activating group is an electron donating group, like the OH group. The OH, the O in the OH has lone pairs, and the lone pairs would overlap with the benzene pi electron cloud and the electron density would become greater, much greater at these positions, two, four and six positions. Another highly activating group was NH2 because it too had lone pairs and its lone pairs could also do pretty much the same. So if the electron density is very, very high, uh, then the chances of attraction between the positive ion and the electrons would increase significantly. So now the electrons are going to be very strongly attracted to the disonium ion. And that's when the reaction happens. So you need, you need a highly activated, you need a highly activated benzene ring. Hopefully this part is clear. Okay. Uh, uh, why is it activated? Okay. OH and NH2, I told you they were 246 donating groups and they had electron donating effect and they had a very large electron donating effect, which increased the electron density significantly. Okay. Is this clear? Anybody, is this clear? Sarah, clear? Ali, is this yes, clear? Sir. So the activated will uh, donate the electrons? I mean, this is trying to pull the electrons, right? But previously, you didn't have a lot of electrons over here. Uh, previously, the electrons were very distributed. So the electrons were attracted, but not very strongly. Now there are lots of electrons over here because the lone pair is also mixed with this electron cloud. So is this clear? Yes, sir. So the last part is that they're going to join up. And when they join up, uh, this would be formed uh, that... An azo group would finally be formed. Okay? The azo group would be this one, that the two benzenes would get connected to each other. So there's going to be N, double bond N. And on the other side, again, you have another benzene. So here's the second benzene, which is, which has OH. And it is highly activated. And this over here is your azo group. The N triple bond, N plus one, uh, let me show this. Uh, previously you had a triple bond here and you had a positive charge. Uh, the ends, the, the attracted electrons from the benzene. So the N ended up bonding with this benzene. And that's how Azodies are formed. So this over here is the basic structure of what an azo, azo group is. And this is the colored compound, the stable colored compound that is formed. 
so an azo die is simply this thing. This is the very basic structure or of of what an azo group looks like and what an azo die is. You can let me label this as well. Okay, so you finally you find you find finally uh, found your azo die. So that's how azo dies are formed. The only difference between azo dies and how do dies have different colors is that there would be different groups attached. Okay, this was a very simple diazonimide with nothing attached to benzene. This was a sim simple phenol or phenylamine with nothing attached to it. In reality, there would be lots of things attached to it. Take one example of uh, what an azo dye is. Methyl orange is one azo dye. So if I if I Google it. And the structure of. So this is what. Uh, where is it? So this is what um, methyl uh, methyl orange looks like. Okay, there's an N double bond in, and there's a benzene which is activated because of the lone pair, and there's another benzene over here. So there are all sorts of azodes. The only difference is the middle part is always the same. Okay. All sort of general structures I'm dekhle. So as it is structures, uh, you, you, this is the one that we did. Uh, so you can have, I say different colors that you get this blue. Every time there's a benzene, take it. Remember they uh, usually benzene neutron alternating double bonds. They're going to mix up take it. So there are all sorts of benzene. The middle part is always the same benzenes. Uh, one side is going to be activated. Remember one side would be an activated benzene every time. And the other side would be uh, a normal benzene. So that's what what, what an azo dye is. Is this clear to everyone? Abu Raira, clear? Are you clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Riva, are you there? Yes. I say, Iskandar, uh, the difficult part is that you might be given the azo dye. And you might be asked to uh, figure out uh, how to make an azo dye, for example, or reactants what are the reagents used? So reverse actually throws a bush killer. The reverse is finding finding reagents. Okay, so this is what you get. So one example is, okay, let's say you have uh, you have a benzene azodite, better than all of them. So you have a benzene, that's one. And double bond in. And then on the other side, there's the other benzene. So, baki ye ke is side with this N followed by a CH3 and another CH3. And on this side, you have, let's say you have a, a carboxylic acid. I said, now, what's the issue? This is the basic structure of a benzene. How do you figure out what the reagents are? Uh, problem is that if you look carefully, okay, this is what the problem is. Okay, there's going to be a highly activated benzene. Okay, let's underline that. Uh, so there's going to be one benzene uh, that's going to be highly activated. The other one should prefer preferably be not activated. Okay, because uh, attraction is happening. Okay, if there are more electrons over here and there's more positive charge over here, then there's going to be more attraction. How can you have more positive charge over here? Okay, if you if you go and attach a group that is uh, that is going to pull electrons away, let's say aldehyde group. You can remember these are electron withdrawing groups. So an aldehyde group would pull electrons away. So positive charge is going to be It's going to be larger. Why? Because the electrons are getting pulled to the other side. So if the positive charge is greater, then the benzene, which is highly activated, 
it's going to be attracted more. So the basic idea is that one of the benzenes should be highly activated. It should have greater electron density. It should have an electron rating group attached. And the other one should be kind of deactivated, which means that there must be something attached that is pulling electrons away from it. So that the positive ion that is formed, uska charge zado. If the positive ion is greater, it's going to be attracted, attracting the electrons from the other side very strongly. As I'm coming back to the point, if I want to split this molecule back again, so remember that uh, the issue is that where would the if you want to figure out the reagents, you can think of the reaction in reverse. If you want to figure out the reagents, you have this thing. You're given this molecule. Now the problem is that n triple bond n plus one is kaisa jayega ya would it go with this one? Ye baat samajh aayi hai. Abhurera, do you get this, Ali? Ariba? Yes, sir. ठीक है. Yes. But the main problem is that if you're if you're given this molecule and you don't know these two. So the, the whole issue is the confusion is okay, where would the where would you attach the triple bond n plus one? Would it be with this one or would it be with this one? So remember this: okay, if you want to figure out the reagents by looking at the molecule and trying to do the reverse, the opposite, the n triple bond n plus one would always go with the benzene. Uh, would would always originally be with the benzene that is deactive. Okay, uh, it wouldn't be with the activated benzene. It would be attracting the activated benzene, but it not be it would not be with the activated benzene. So if you look at this molecule, can anyone guess okay, which one out of the two is the is the activated one? Any idea? The Any left idea? one or? No, which one has more electron density? Like if you look over here, the right one. The right one. N has lone pairs, right? And those lone pairs are going to overlap with with benzene. Uh, remember, N has lone pairs, and the lone pair electron density is going to be even higher because you even have carbon chains. Carbon chains का effect क्या होता है? They also have an electron donating effect. ठीक है? Remember, carbon chains also have electron donating effect. So the end result is that this benzene is going to have a very high charge density. So there's going to be more electrons at the two, four, six positions. ठीक है? The lone pairs are going to overlap, and it's going to be an activated benzene ring. Aisha, is this clear? Abu Rehra, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I said this one is going to be your activated benzene. The other one is your deactivated benzene because it has a carboxylic acid group, and carboxylic acid groups have electron withdrawing effect, which is why uh, there's going to be lesser charge density over here. So if you want to figure out uh, your reactants now, and if you want to try and do the opposite now, okay, which two things reacted to produce this? So you're going to break the molecule in the middle. Okay, there are going to be two benzenes. Okay, I'm trying to figure out the reactants. So there are going to be two benzenes. Are you clear here, Yatak? Yes, sir. Ah, so ye, aapke do benzenes hoge. और अच्छा ये बेंजीन ड्रॉ करने की ना प्रैक्टिस कर लेना ढेर सारी बिकॉज अलॉट पीपल मेक टेरेबल बेंजीन ठीक है अच्छा दिस द मॉलिक्यूल हैज बीन ब्रोकन फ्रॉम द मिडल दिस साइड इज एन एंड सी एच टू एंड सी एच थ्री एंड दिस साइड इज सी एच थ्री एंड ओवर हेयर द अदर साइड यू हैव सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ एंड ओ एच So the main issue was K, uh, the end triple bond N plus one. It is going to be be with this one. I mean that is how the reaction would have started. Or you may actually reverse, Karo. You know what? I mean what we wanted to figure out was the reagents that made this molecule. Okay, so this is how uh, the reaction would have happened. And uh, this is your. Highly activated benzene. So this is how you're going to figure out what the what the reagents are. Okay, if you're being asked, okay, what are the reagents for this reaction? This is how you're going to figure this out. Okay, remember, don't get confused. Uh, if you're given an azodai and you want to figure out which two things make up the azodai, uh, break break the molecule in the middle. 
ATP, you get two molecules. The only thing you have to figure out is whether to attach N triple bond N plus one with this one or with this one. So you ask, like, okay, if one of them is the accurate benzene, attach it to the other one. Okay, that's that's how the reaction actually happens. So you may, I'm going to write this over here as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to write this. It's uh, N triple bond N plus one group goes with the D actor benzene. It goes with the deactivated benzene when trying to figure out the reactants. So when trying to figure out the reactants, we question any of the Kisi question. Anyone, Ariba, Sara, is this all clear? Ali? Yes, sir. Okay, so this whole process is okay. How do you start with benzene? Or how do you reach up till amines? And then from amines, how do you make diazonimines, which are very unstable? And uh, if you keep the temperature above uh, 10 degrees centigrade, one thing that we did not discuss is the conditions. Okay, that those are missing. Uh, I'm going to write the conditions for this reaction. The conditions for this reaction is you just add aqueous NH. Okay, or you can say alkaline conditions are used. Uh, NH aqueous, as an example. Okay, they are used. And uh, remember, temperature is kept below 10 degrees centigrade. So we're done with azodize. Uh, uh, basis ka comparison kiya tha night. We were done with amides. Uh, so what is left? So we, we we're almost done with the organic part. Just one second. I said, so, sorry, this is the 2022 syllabus. Okay, uh, syllabus, okay, just one second. I said, main organic chemistry, a bit of polymers, right? Let's uh, confirm currently. I said, each of them, I'm going to see the syllabus. Just a small, simple reaction that has not been covered yet. And that is the reduction of nitrogen compounds. Or basically it is a formation of amines through reduction. So how do you how do you form amines? One is you take a nitrile which is RC triple bond N or let's add a carbon chain. And you reduce it. Uh, there are two reducing agents. One is NABH4, which is usually ethanolic. And the other one is LIALH4, uh, which is 
in dry ether. Uh, so these two are used and you can also use another one which is hydrogenation. It's H2 plus nickel or nickel catalyst. Uh, this could also be used. Uh, what happens is that the triple bond uh, goes away and uh, hydrogens get added to it. So it's going to be CH3, CH2, and there's C triple bond N. So the C triple bond N uh, would be broken and there would only be one bond left between them. And the rest would be that hydrogens are going to get added. So an amine would be formed. So that's, that's one way. Uh, the next way is, uh, which is pretty much the same, you use the same condition, and that is a reduction of uh, amides. So reduction of amides happens in exactly the same way. Uh, that you, if you have an amide, for example, there is a CH3. What's an amide? It has C double bond O and NH groups and uh, Let's say there's another carbon chain here. So this middle part is the amide group. Under the same conditions, it's going to get reduced as well. And the oxygen will get removed. I mean, the CH3, C double bond O. Instead of the O, there would be H now. And within, there were already Hs, so it's going to be CH2, CH3. Now, now it's an amide. Uh, because the cetal bond O group has gone. Uh, the conditions are exactly, exactly the same. So you use the exact same conditions for both reactions. Uh, plus, there's one more reduction, which is reduction of, so which is reduction of nitrobenzene, which we've already done. This we've already done that uh, you can reduce nitrobenzene. So NO2 can be converted by reacting it with tin plus concentrated HCl. And that would result in the formation of So that is going to result in the formation of NH2. And this is for formation of, uh, of phenylamine. So different amines can be produced uh, via reduction. Most of the time, they, they, you reduce a substance, you can reduce a nitrile, you can reduce an amide, or you can reduce a nitrobenzene. And every time you're going to get an amine. Okay, is this clear? Saro clear? Saro, is this clear? Ali clear? So these three processes will uh, form amine? Yes, they're going to produce amines. Okay. Uh, I said, okay. Now, we, now we're going to just quickly check. Uh, okay, apart from the polymers. So apart from uh, okay, now we're pretty much left with polymers. Okay, there's uh, uh, there's there's a bit of carboxylic acid that's left, so we're going to quickly do that. Uh, we'll be finally end condition that okay. I can make a PDF and send it to you. So apart from polymers, we would be pretty much done with it. So carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids, remember, can be, they can be reduced. So how, how are carboxylic acids formed in the first place? Primary alcohol 
would get oxidized to a secondary alcohol. And those secondary alcohols would then further get oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Not secondary alcohol, they would get oxidized to an aldehyde, okay? Yeah. This was oxidation of alcohols. Uh, the reverse is that carboxylic acid can be reduced back to a, an aldehyde or a primary alcohol. And the way that's done is it's going to be LiAlH4. Uh, that would be your reducing agent uh, for reduction of a carboxylic acid. Then another thing is that carboxylic acids can also be oxidized. And not all of them. Most of them are very, very stable. So only a few of some carboxylic acids And they're basically two. Uh, one of them is oxalic acid, or you can call it ethane dioic acid. That's number one. Uh, it's ethane dioic acid, which means uh, which means that it's going to be Ethane dioic means two carbons, and dioic means there's going to be carboxylic acids on two sides. And both of them, what you just need to know is that they're going to get oxidized to uh, carbon dioxide and water molecules. All the carbons are going to gain more oxygens, and eventually they would form carbon. The hydrogens are going to gain oxygens, so, so carbon dioxide and water are going to be produced. And the other one is methanoic acid. And pretty much the same thing happens to it as well. It would also form, it would also form carbon dioxide and water uh, when it reacts. So the second one is methanoic acid. Now the conditions are different. For one, felling reagent is used, and for the other one, uh, KMnO4 is used. Uh, if you look at the syllabus, it's going to be uh, magnate 7 or KMnO4 used for ethane, ethane dioic acid and felling and tolens reagents are used for methanoic acid. So those are your conditions for the reaction. So it's going to be KMnO4 acidified and the other one is felling and tolens. Or tolens. Okay, now uh, we're running out of time. Uh, just remember that uh, carboxylic acids don't usually get oxidized. There are only two of them that get oxidized. You don't have to remember much. Uh, just remember that uh, this one, ethane dioic acid and methanoic acid. Uh, they're going to get oxidized uh, by KMnO4, which is your oxidizing agent, or by felling and tolens. If you if you remember this. Uh, from AS, uh, felling and tolens were also used to oxidize aldehydes as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, revise that also in the next class then. Uh, but otherwise, apart from polymers, this kind of proteins we're going to put in your Sara polymers, pol uh, condensation polymers, or what's uh, that This pretty much covers uh, the rest of organic. Okay, just kind of reactions we're going to keep. So just go through this. You have to learn, uh, memorize everything about uh, these azodes. Okay, these were important. The baki jo hai, these are reactions. Uh, okay, amide, amides, uh, nitriles can be reduced. Amides could be reduced. Nitrobenzenes could be reduced. Uh, these are the small reactions, uh, jo, which usually would would carry one or two marks. But this is your big question: How are azodes formed? You're going to get big questions on this. Okay. So let's continue in the next class. We're going to start past paper practice of organic uh, from the next class, hopefully. TK, we, we, we're going to skip uh, polymerization for now. We're going to do some past papers related to organic mostly. TK. So TK, let's continue next time. Okay then.
Sir, can you send the link for the, this one, this notes? I think I'm, I'm sending you the board link. Okay, thank you so much. On the chart, take it this chart. Also, oh, yeah. Sir, WhatsApp may be. Nice. Take it, WhatsApp may be. Is it corner? I drew go click on You can send it. Sir, copy it. Sir, copy it. Sir, copy it. Sir, copy it. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Allah.